Could the US government soon have full control of information online? Well, a recent US bill aimed at reining in TikTok has a strong chance of becoming law. The Biden administration is The Biden administration in the Biden administration is increasing pressure on the popular app TikTok. Over the last couple of years, we've seen governments around the world increase their scrutiny of TikTok due to its connections to the Chinese government. This scrutiny has escalated into calls for an outright ban of the app in some countries, and it appears some governments are using their banned TikTok bills as Trojan horses for unprecedented internet censorship. That's why today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this US bill before it's too late. Let's start with a quick bit of background. As I explained in the introduction, governments around the world have been scrutinizing TikTok for years due to its connections to the Chinese government. This is in part because TikTok collects an unbelievable amount of data about its users. Literally everything. Your name, your age, your phone number, your contacts, your location, the images and videos on your phone, everything you type on your phone, including the messages you're sending and receiving. It can even access your camera and microphone, and it can do all of this even when you're not using the app. Now, TikTok surveillance apologists have argued that it's no different from being tracked and traced by an American tech company like Google or Microsoft. The thing is that there are two very important differences. First, governments need permission to access user data in most Western countries. Secondly, and more importantly, this data is being shared with a foreign government that is the geopolitical rival of most Western powers. Consider a scenario where the Chinese government orders ByteDance, the company that owns TikTok, to execute a cyber attack on every device with TikTok downloaded in the United States. Not good. On that note, that wouldn't be far off from the kind of cyber attack the World Economic Forum has been talking about for years. More about that in the description. I digress. Now, the other part of why there's been so much scrutiny about TikTok ties into the first, and that's the algorithm. There have been countless reports of TikTok feeding straight-up evil content to people in the West. Recent reports have focused on TikTok's promotion of eating disorders and suicide. Meanwhile, Du Yin, China's version of TikTok, also owned by ByteDance, shows young people videos of things being built, discoveries being made, and other meaningful things being accomplished. In other words, it promotes the exact opposite kind of content that TikTok does in most Western countries. Now, it doesn't take a geopolitical expert to realize that this is an overt form of information warfare, and it begs the question of what should be done about it. Well, the simple answer is to ban TikTok, and this is something that former US President Donald Trump famously proposed way back in 2020. ByteDance initially agreed to meet Trump halfway by selling its US operations to Microsoft. This would, of course, result in keeping all the data the app collected in the US away from China. To my understanding, the sale fell through after ByteDance rejected the offer. In any case, the idea of a TikTok ban was ditched after US President Joe Biden revoked Trump's related executive order in 2021. At the time, the proposed ban was seen as political suicide due to the app's popularity. Over the last year or so, however, US politicians have changed their tune on TikTok. Now, as far as I can tell, the renewed calls to ban TikTok began late last year when the Biden administration put together the US government's $1.7 trillion spending bill for 2023. A provision to ban TikTok from government devices is buried in the over 4,000-page bill, which passed in December. In the months that followed, close allies of the US followed suit in banning TikTok from government devices, namely the UK and the EU. Now, this makes sense considering that TikTok may be sharing sensitive information about these Western government devices with the Chinese government. Then, on the 7th of March, Democrat politician Mark Warner and Republican politician John Thune introduced a bill titled, quote, 
restricting the emergence of security threats that risk Information and Communications Technology Act, aka the RESTRICT Act. US lawmakers do love their acronyms, don't they? Now, I'll quickly note that the bill is supposed to be about banning TikTok. On that same day, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan issued a statement applauding the introduction of the RESTRICT Act. He highlighted the widespread support the bill has received from politicians of both political parties. Put simply, there's a high likelihood that it will become law. As often happens in such cases, it took people a couple of weeks to realize that the Restrict Act has almost nothing to do with banning TikTok. It seems people started to take notice after TikTok CEO Xu Zi Chu testified before US politicians who took advantage of the opportunity to shill the Restrict Act. In the days that followed, the internet erupted with outrage over the contents of the bill. Dozens of Twitter threads about these details went viral. Popular alternative media publications on both sides of the political spectrum published punchy pieces opposing the, quote, insanely broad provisions. Not surprisingly, there was almost no coverage from the mainstream media, and most of the coverage continues to fact-check what's being said about the bill. Surprisingly, there was quite a bit of coverage from the crypto media, and that's because the Restrict Act could be used to ban crypto in the US. Many of the crypto headlines about the bill were about an article published by Coin Center, a crypto think tank based in Washington, D.C. The article in question is titled, quote, The Restrict Act Creates Blanket Authority with Few Checks to Ban Just About Anything Linked to a Foreign Adversary. In the article, the authors explain that the Restrict Act is analogous to a law passed in the 1970s which prohibits Americans from transacting with sanctioned entities. The difference is that the Restrict Act would sanction transactions in which so-called foreign adversaries, quote, have an interest. The Act itself specifies that an interest includes, quote, the provision of the technology or service. This means that Americans could face fines and jail time for using cryptocurrencies if any of the mining or validating is being done by an entity or in a country considered to be an adversary of the USA. Now, believe it or not, but this barely scratches the surface of how ridiculous the Restrict Act is. Now, before I break down the Restrict Act, I must give a shout out to Lewis Rossman, who did a detailed breakdown of the bill on his channel and added some much needed context. Be sure to check out his channel using the link in the description. Trust me when I say that it is extremely underrated. Now, the bill begins by specifying that all the powers within it will be given to the United States Secretary of Commerce. For context, the Secretary of Commerce is appointed by whoever happens to be the president at the time. This appointment is approved by the majority of senior US politicians. Next, the bill gives some definitions, and there are a couple worth pointing out. The first is covered transactions, which means a transaction in which a foreign adversary has any interest. Remember that bit? Again, it's the Secretary of Commerce who determines which entity is a foreign adversary. The second definition worth pointing out is critical infrastructure, and its meaning comes from the infamous Patriot Act. Lewis explained in his video about the bill that the Patriot Act defines critical infrastructure in such a way that it can apply to basically anything that the government sees fit. The third definition worth pointing out is foreign adversary because it actually includes a few examples. Naturally, it lists China, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, and Russia. It also includes Venezuela, but only so long as the country is ruled by Nicolas Maduro. Regime change coming to Venezuela soon, hmm? Jokes aside, the next section of the bill deals with, quote, information and communication technology products that pose undue or unacceptable risk. Obviously, it's once again the Secretary of Commerce who determines which information and technology poses a risk to the national security of the United States. The bill notes one of the risks as being anything that could, quote, undermine democratic processes and institutions or steer policy and regulatory decisions in favor of the strategic objectives of 
a foreign adversary. In other words, if you oppose the US government in any way, you're in big trouble. Now, this ties into something that Lewis noticed in the seventh section of the bill, and that's that lobbyists will be allowed to advise the Secretary of Commerce as to which products and services should be labelled foreign adversaries and banned in the US. This would inevitably lead to a monopoly in every industry. Later on, in section 11, the bill reveals exactly what fines and jail time Americans would suffer for interacting in any way with an entity deemed a foreign adversary or doing anything that could be labelled a risk to national security. It starts by saying that attempts to evade these laws are illegal. Now, this is code for a crackdown on virtual private networks, or VPNs, which is one aspect of the bill that went viral. For reference, VPNs provide privacy when you browse websites, and they let you access foreign websites. Lewis noted that the US government has been trying to ban VPNs for at least 15 years. Then, when it comes to the actual punishments, Americans can face up to $250,000 in fines for civil penalties. For criminal penalties, the fines can be as much as $1 million, result in up to 20 years in prison, and even result in the government seizing your assets. Still no mention of banning TikTok, by the way. But wait, there's more. In the 12th section of the bill, there's a sentence which reads, quote, Actions taken by the Secretary under this Act shall not be subject to Sections 551, 553 through 559, and 701 through 707 of Title V United States Code. Lewis looked up these sections in his video, and it means there's no oversight. Specifically, it will not be possible for Americans to submit Freedom of Information requests to understand why it is that the Secretary of Commerce is labelling some entities as foreign adversaries or some activities as high risk. As a cherry on top, neither Congress nor the courts can request information. Now, these disturbing details are why the Restrict Act is being referred to by many as the Patriot Act for the Internet or Patriot Act 2.0. For those unfamiliar, the Patriot Act was passed in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks in 2001. Its provisions permitted spying on everyone in the name of fighting terrorism. As some of you will know, the Patriot Act was supposed to be temporary, but in 2013, an intelligence consultant named Edward Snowden blew the whistle on the ongoing surveillance. He also revealed that other governments around the world are engaged in similarly extensive levels of domestic surveillance. As a fun fact, the Patriot Act is apparently the origin of all the KYC requirements in finance today. You'll know this if you've been keeping up with our coverage of the Financial Action Task Force, or FATF. The Restrict Act could result in KYC requirements online, hence why Patriot Act 2.0 is an accurate alias. Now, I'll remind you that the Restrict Act has a good chance of becoming law. Last I checked, the bill has at least 20 supporters in the Senate, which consists of 100 senior politicians. If it passes the Senate, it will head to the House, and if passed there, it will be signed off by Biden and officially become law. It's too soon to say whether the bill will survive this circuit, but it's already clear that it's causing a backlash against all the other bills that are trying to ban TikTok. This was made apparent when Rand Paul blocked Josh Hawley's bill in order to fast-track his own bill to ban TikTok. Note that both are Republicans. In stark contrast to the Restrict Act, the originally titled No TikTok on United States Devices Act does actually ban TikTok. More importantly, this second bill isn't packed with provisions that give the government more power. It's only four sections long and only provides specifics around the TikTok ban itself. Now, unfortunately, the video showing the exchange between Rand and Josh has a lot of comments from uninformed viewers claiming that the bill he tried to fast track will lead to government surveillance. This isn't the case at all, but the exchange did put the TikTok ban into perspective. Josh's arguments for banning TikTok are essentially the same as the ones I mentioned earlier. TikTok collects everything, it shares sensitive data with the CCP about journalists and politicians, 
and this ban has been a long time coming as a result. He also revealed that TikTok has been lobbying against the ban. Now, Rand's reason for blocking Josh's TikTok ban was that it sets a dangerous precedent for the US government to do the same to other apps it doesn't like. He also argued that it goes against the First Amendment, free speech, and that it's technically illegal to ban TikTok in the US because of this. Rand then proclaimed that people have the ability to know what's good and what's bad, and that they have the power to uninstall the app if they feel it's bad for them. He said that you should fear your own government, not China's, and asked if internet censorship is more dangerous than questionable content. Josh fired back by saying, that the First Amendment doesn't protect China's ability to spy on US citizens. Josh also seemed to imply that Rand had been paid by TikTok's lobbyists to block his attempt to fast-track the ban. Now, I highly doubt this. Rand is a libertarian. He is wary of all governments everywhere. It sucks that his valid viewpoints could soon be suppressed by all the internet censorship laws being rolled out by governments around the world. More about those in the description. Now, to wrap things up, I want to try and settle the debate. Should TikTok be banned? Well, to my mind, this debate is similar to the ones about banning or legalizing drugs. If you think about it, social media platforms like TikTok are mental drugs of sorts, and they come with their own unique benefits and risks. Suppose you ban this mental drug. Chances are that people will still find some way to get their hands on it, in this case using VPNs and the like. Now, this is a problem because you would lose oversight of how this drug is being used. Attempts to crack down on VPNs also wouldn't go over well and would be opposed. Now, suppose you legalize this mental drug. Chances are that it will be relentlessly promoted by the individuals and institutions that profit from it. This is a problem because it would lead to excess consumption and give rise to the kind of extreme content that we see on most social media today. This underscores another dimension to the TikTok ban debate. TikTok isn't the only game in town. Other social media platforms such as Instagram have effectively copied its video flow. Banning TikTok could therefore result in users gradually switching to alternatives like Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts, for instance. As such, the toxic algorithms would persist due to the perverse incentive structure that comes with legalization. The only thing you would have addressed is sharing user data with the Chinese government. Instead, it would likely be shared with the US government. Remember, the Patriot Act still exists. Now, the same outcome would occur if ByteDance was forced to sell TikTok to an American company. You would just be replacing the Chinese government with the US government. Sensitive data would still be shared. And given how the US government has been acting lately, that wouldn't be that different in practice. Regarding the algorithm, it's true that giving the US government de facto control of TikTok through some big tech company would probably result in less destructive content suggestions. However, I don't imagine giving the US government control of social media algorithms is a good long-term strategy either. Come to think of it, the whole reason why we're having this debate about banning TikTok is because of the government. On the one hand, We have China collecting data and weaponizing the algorithm. On the other hand, we have the US, which will do the same when given the chance, assuming it's not already. So, what's the right answer in this debate? Easy. Get the government out of social media. Rand Paul is right, but I'm sure he knows this will be impossible to do so long as social media remains centralized. That's why the only solution is to create truly decentralized social media which can't be controlled. In practical terms, this means legalizing the ability to make your own decentralized mental drugs using cryptocurrency. However, this kind of legalization will be easier said than done. After all, governments are the biggest dealers of the centralized mental drugs we all use now, and they don't want any competition. And that's all for today's video, folks. If you learned something new, let me know by smashing that like button. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next video, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. And if you feel this content is important, feel free to share it with your friends and family. And if you happen to be a crypto bro or sis, 
Check out the Coin Bureau deals page for massive discounts and incentives you just can't miss. I've got discounts on hardware wallets and thousands of dollars of trading incentives on the top cryptocurrency exchanges. Check them out using the link in the description. And with all that said, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Till then, stay cool, stay safe, and stay crypto. Thank you.